Well, hi there. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. Thank you for clicking that link and joining us today. Uh, this is our special Gypsy Curse edition of Chess Base Workshop. This will be my fourth take on this particular feature. Um, there's been a technical problem with every single video I've done so far. The last one had no sound. It was really exciting to watch it without narration. Um, somebody does not want me to talk to you about Monte Carlo analysis. And it makes sense to me in a weird, weird way, because this is actually a really, really valuable feature for double-checking master and grandmaster analysis, double-checking those evaluations at the end of a, at the end of an opening line in ECO or MCO or whatever CO you happen to be using, whatever flavor, nuns chess openings, whatever it happens to be, they all end with an evaluation line. You can check those evaluations in practical play by using Monte Carlo analysis. It's a cool feature. What it's going to do is allow the chess engine to play a whole bunch of games against itself and give you statistics on the results, and it will generate a game tree, an opening book, based on those games. And we're going to show you how it works. Very simple. I'm, I'm using a position from that uh, Frank Marshall opening book that I was talking about in the last chess-based workshop. Um, it's called Marshall's Chess Openings, if I'm not mistaken. It was written around 1903 or 1904 by the great man himself. Here's a line in the Gioco Piano, the quiet game, the Italian game, in which he, uh, after Black's move, Rook D6, he says, Black should win. It says, after this, and Black should win. Should Black win? Huh. Let's find out. We'll use Monte Carlo analysis and try to come sort to some sort of a determination on this. So what we're going to do is start with this position after Rook D6, just like Mr. Marshall had in his book. We will go to the analysis menu, and we will go to the analysis part of the ribbon and select Monte Carlo and get an error message. Now, that's done on purpose. I did this on purpose. This engine does not support Monte Carlo analysis. Well, why not? I've loaded Fritz 12. This is the Fritz 12 interface, by the way. And I've loaded Fritz 12, but Fritz 12 does not use Monte Carlo analysis. You have to load the Ribka engine. Now, the Ribka 4 version, sold by Chessbase, uses this exact same interface, all the same features as Fritz 12, but it gives you an extra feature as well, Monte Carlo analysis. So you need to use the Chessbase version of Ribka 4 to make the magic happen here. But in Ribka 4, everything else will be the same. You'll see all the same menus, the same buttons, everything. It'll look just like this. It uses the same interface, just a different engine, which we will load now. Let me hit F3 on the keyboard, the F3 key, to go to my long scrolling list of engines to come down here to Ribka 4, and we'll load that. And now Ripka 4 is loaded. We can click Monte Carlo. And bing, here we are. We now have a different display. Our notation pane has been taken away. Instead, we have an openings book pane. Why? Because one of the features of Monte Carlo analysis is the engine is going to play a whole bunch of games against itself, and it's going to generate an opening book. It's going to take those games and merge them together into an opening book that we'll be able to use. We'll be able to look at it later, look at statistics, and even load it as an opening book to be able to play against our the chess engine of our choice from this particular position if we choose to do so. It has all the same features of a normal opening book, and it's going to be generated on the fly from all these games that Ribka is going to play against itself. Search depth, you need to set how deep the program is going to look ahead before it plays a move. If I was going to do this outside of a video format, if I wasn't making a video right now and wanted to check this particular position, I would set the search depth for 15, 17, or even 19. But because I want this to be done in a few minutes so that we, you know, so I can actually show you what happens with this analysis form, because I'm going to let this run and show you how it works, we want to go for a lower number. So seven is a little bit low in my opinion, but it'll do for our purposes. One, three, and five are right out. That's just too shallow. That's just ridiculous. You'll get very silly moves. Um, by the way, I'm throwing out odd numbers for a search depth. That's because you want to use odd numbers. Uh, a lot of chess engines are blind at even ply search depths, 
I'm not going to go through a whole explanation about that here. I've written about it extensively. If you dig around, you can find some of my older articles that talk about it, um, especially ones about the shootout feature in Fritz. Do mention this particular uh, this particular thing about the this even ply and odd ply search depths. Use an odd number. Just for the purpose of this video, trust me, just use an odd number. And use a decent number, too. Like I said, 15, 17, 19 would be what I would use if I was doing this for myself instead of making a video. Number of engines, I will confess, I don't know what that means. That's a new twist that's been put in this time around that I have not researched yet. Um, so I'm not sure what that what that's referring to, although I do know that with the 64-bit Ribka engine, it will load different um, iterations of itself, and I believe that's what that refers to. You can load it twice and have, it, have two different iterations of itself play against itself, I believe is what that's referring to. But I could be wrong, so don't take that as gospel. Tree size, very similar to the uh, the branching factor that we saw last week in deep position analysis. Um, the bigger you set it, like broad, you wind up with a much bigger tree, but it also takes a little bit more time to generate, so it's kind of a trade-off. I'm going for a narrow tree, uh, particularly because better moves will be in it. I don't want uh, you know crappier moves that you'll get with broad, and I don't want this to take forever, so I'm going to go with a narrow tree size. Mainly what I want to do is show you how this works. So let's quit yammering about it and click OK and find out what happens. I will tell you that once I click OK, watch this box up at the top, this rectangular box next to the stop button. Um, this is where the magic happens, right in there. So we'll click OK. We'll give it a second. It's got to load the engine. Now it's going to start playing games against itself. So give it a moment. It takes about 10 seconds or so, maybe a little less for a game to generate. You'll see the uh, number of games you'll see that start to increment as we go. Right now it's just one game. Give it a second or two. There we go. Two games. Both have been draws. Now I'll tell you how to read this. It's talking about, first of all, the name of the engine is here. Ribka 4, 64-bit version. Depth 7, we set that before. The number of games that have been played so far will appear right here. So far there have been three. Going to be four here any second. There we go. Four games have been played. The results are displayed next. After the plus sign is the number of white wins. After the equal sign is the number of draws. After the minus sign is the number of black wins. You'll see that white has won no game so far. Black has drawn five. Or I'm sorry, there have been five draws and black has won one. Sorry. Somebody's sneaking in the room distracting me here. Hi there. Um, the next number is the percentage, success percentage, from the standpoint of white. The more games white wins, the higher the number. The fewer games white wins, the lower the number. So far we've seen six draws, three black wins. That's why we're seeing 33.3%, a .3%, uh, very low number for white. Now white just won one. We get a performance rating over here. Uh, basically this is what would happen to white's ELO rating based on the results of these 11, soon to be 12 games. Um, it's just performance indicator. If it's a negative number, white's not doing so well. If it's a positive number, white's doing wonderfully well. Do the number of draws here. We now have seven draws, one white win, three black wins, and eight draws. Now, I've run this before. As I said, this is the fourth time through this video, and you do get different numbers every time. This is going to be based on these 12 games, soon to be 13 games that have been played. That's what these numbers are based on. If you run it another time, you may get slightly different uh, you know, get a variance. That's what this this lower line here refers to, by the way. This is for the hardcore statisticians among us. Um, this tells you uh, the variance given a particular mean, um, which which way of, of that median, uh, which side of it the, the numbers tend to fall on. I'm going to let that slide. I've had that explained to me. I'm not a mathematics major. I understand, you know, I have I've kind of a grasp of what that means. But I'm not going to burden you with that. I have written about it online, and there have been some other people who have written about it as well. So I uh, encourage you to go find those articles. What I'm really looking at in this video is this upper line right here. Um, the number of games, white wins, draws, black wins, the percentage from white's point of view, and look at this, we're dead even again, 50% and no change to white's ELO rating and his performance rating. So that upper line is mainly what we're looking at, as well as this. This is a tree. This is a tree based on the games that uh, that Ribka has played against itself, and it looks just like your normal opening book. In fact, you'll be able to save this as an opening book later, if you wish. What you're looking at here are the moves uh, in statistical order. Um, three moves generally are getting played by white in this position. The number of games uh, overall, the number of games for each, and the success rating for each of these moves. 
just like a regular opening book that you would generate in chess base using master or grandmaster games. I've had 27 games played so far. I'm going to stop it generally around 30 or so. However, I will tell you before we go, uh, before we stop this and show you the next step, if this was something that you were going to do yourself, you would let this run for a long, long, long time. I mean, compared to the length of this video, anyway. If I was going to let this run with a search depth of 17 or 19 ply, I'd let this run for hours. I might even let this run overnight uh, to generate lots and lots and lots of games. The more games you generate, the deeper you make the search, the bigger the tree, the more reliable the tree, the better the moves, and the better the results. The more reliable this is going to be. 31 games is not a huge statistical sampling. Um, 32 games now. Um, I would I would like to see a couple hundred games at least uh, played from this position before I would put a lot of stock in the results. Because um, you've seen already, uh, Black took an early lead, then it was dead even for a while, now White's picking up again where, where Black has 8 wins, White has 6, uh, White's percentage 47%. Now, there's, now it's dropped just a little bit with another draw. Um, so 34 games is not a huge percentage. I'd like to see a couple hundred games before I would put a lot of stock in these numbers that you see at the top here, as well as the tree itself. We're going to stop this after 35 games, though. We are seeing though, that Black, uh, Black has won 10 games out of 36. Uh, does that mean what Marshall said about Black should win? Is that correct? Well, I don't know. It looks like, I mean, there's 20 games here that have been draws. It looks like with proper play, White can hold a draw here. I'm not going to say that Marshall was wrong. Uh, I may say that Marshall may have overstated his case as to the strength of Black's position, but Marshall was a big fan of Black pieces. Uh, if you go back and read his books, if you if you read his writings, if if you interviews, all kinds of stuff, uh, Marshall was a big fan of playing Black. He liked to play Black, and I've noticed that in his book on the openings, he does very often mention that you know Black is better here, Black should win, Black has an advantage, and I think he he may overstate it just a little bit which is part of the reason why I wanted to run this analysis. I wanted to see if Marshall is overstating Black's case in this position. And after 42, 43 games, it looks like he may have done so. But again, this is a very shallow search depth, and uh, uh, it's a very, very cursory analysis if we stop it here. I would go for a much longer search depth if I was doing this for my own research and probably let it run for a couple hours at least, possibly even let it run overnight. I'd want to see a couple of hundred games before I'd put a lot of stock in these numbers. But now you know how it works. Now you know how to read the results. You know what this is about. We can go ahead and click the stop button to stop it. And what we get is the opportunity to save the tree. We can save this, uh, this opening book that was just generated. If we click Yes, we get the standard Windows File Select dialog. We can name it. In fact, I saved it once before. I'll save it here again. In a previous take of this video, I had saved it. Um, called it MarshallJoko.ctg. Click New Open, which should actually be, uh, be a, uh, a Save button. But go ahead and click it. And when you're done, it kicks you back to the main screen here. And you can go ahead and load the tree. Take a look at it, play through the moves, look at the, the, the statistics. You can also load that tree if you'd like to play a bunch of games yourself against the chess engine. From this position, after Rook D6, you can absolutely do it just by loading that opening book. All of the moves from 1 through Rook D6 will be in the book, and then all the branches will occur after. All the stuff that Ribka generated will occur, and you can actually play against that opening book use it as a statistical study tool or use it as, a, as an opening book for your own play in the Fritz 12 interface. So that's how Monte Carlo analysis works. It's kind of a cool way to double check on another player's analysis, which may be why I'm gypsy cursed on this video. I've had to do it four times. Somebody out there doesn't want me to tell you about this feature. So hopefully the sound has worked, the video has worked, everything is fine, and you can learn the secrets of this really, really cool feature that you can use in the Fritz slash Ribka interface using the Ribka 4 chess engine. Remember, you can't use Monte Carlo analysis with Fritz, only with Ribka, and it's well worth using. It is a really, really cool analysis tool. Till the next chess-based workshop, have fun.